Good afternoon. Good morning in some cases, depending on where you are across the, the country. Welcome to everybody. We're going to talk today about the accelerated MBA here at Queen's at the Smith School of Business. And uh, it's one of a, a number of our MBA programs and master's programs that we have here. If you have questions, and you probably do during this, feel throw, uh, free to throw them in the Q&A. And we'll, we may answer them throughout as we've anticipated some questions or we may uh, answer them at the end. We'll ha be happy to stop out about uh, 25 minutes and we'll leave room and try to land the plane on around 30 minutes of your time. I know you're taking time out of your day, so I, I certainly appreciate that. I've got Elizabeth working with me in the background. Well, we've got a number of uh, recruitment and, and applicant advisors, humans, not bots, that are uh, here and able to help as well. So uh, I welcome everybody to this program today. Uh, we've also got folks that will join us in progress. We know we have about 90 signed up for today and we hold this um, uh, at least a monthly event. And uh, I'll tell you more about those that we've already enrolled in the program. This is looking at a January 2024 start for this program. So we'll explain more as we go through it. Welcome everybody. My name is Glenn Hollis. I'm the director of the accelerated program here at the Smith School of Business. You can see in the picture our atrium at the business school at Queen's University and uh, proudly showing our Starbucks. So right away, hopefully that gives a check mark to our MBA program over others. So let me first acknowledge that the Smith School of Business at Queen's University is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. We're grateful to be able to live, learn and play on this wonderful Turtle Island that we are uh, proudly a part of but guests. So we want to talk about some very specific things. Queen's MBA, one year, while you work and in your home city. This was designed almost 15 years ago, and it was designed exactly for that. How can we make this as focused for those individuals that have a background in, in certain things that we'll talk about, um, and this is something that they can accelerate and uh, achieve an MBA and something that will accelerate their career as well and their plans. So I hope you're looking around. When I interview people, first thing I say or ask is, have you looked at other MBA programs? I hope you have. We're quite proud of our MBA program here, the Accelerated MBA and our other MBA programs, They're very distinct. But when you're looking around, you should look at things like flexibility. We'll talk about that in terms of working, staying working, uh, not stopping out. That's a full-time MBA that we do have here, but this is something where people are still working. Diverse perspective, we're gonna talk about that as a unique element with this MBA versus any other MBA that's out there, a pan-Canadian experience. The support piece around coaching, I will go into some detail on, and this is something that you should look at as far as your MBA in terms of what you're getting for the money spent. Um, is it going to be supported through various, uh, a number of various uh, opportunities? The team approach, again, is a unique element that we're quite proud of here at Smith School of Business. And this looks at uh, team coaches and the formation of teams that you're going to be a part of for the full year. And then, of course, if you're going to spend money, hard earned good money, and you're going to take the time, you want to do it with a school, a business school that has a top reputation. And we'll talk more about that as well. So flexibility. This is a 12 month program, uh, tip to tail, January start, we finish in December and it's intentionally focused on that, those 12 months. And we do that through uh, live sessions here at Queens. I'll talk more about that, but then also mostly delivered live, but in your own uh, market where you live and work. Um, in most cases, it's in a boardroom that we've got right across Canada. In some cases, it's a virtual boardroom. Um, but again, they're all live lectures, and I'll explain that uh, that hybrid approach that we've got as well. We look at this as less time and cost. There is, of course, a cost to the program, but you're not stopping working. And that opportunity cost is a very important thing to consider for sure. And then the way that we also approach this is everybody that will come into the program, you that are listening, those 70 others that we'll send this out to that have signed up for this webinar, you have an undergraduate in business or, or the equivalent of that 10 prerequisite courses that I'll talk about. And that allows you to really enter what is considered the second year of an MBA, which allows you to do it in those 12 months and then staying working and not putting your career on hold. As I mentioned, the opportunity cost is massive 
Obviously, that's something that you want to, you've planned to continue to do. So you've looked at either a part-time MBA or you've looked at an accelerated MBA. And uh, one of the few that we've got is this one. And delivering the value uh, of the Queens and the Smith School of Business is something that we're very proud of as well. So the way we do this, we've got boardrooms across Canada, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Mississauga, Markham. But we also have virtual boardrooms that we added. And I did this about three years ago to mirror what's going on in our executive MBA and our MBA of the Americas, the joint Cornell University and Queen's University MBA. And we're able to pull in some fascinating people from across Canada where we may not have a hard boardroom. So it adds to the richness of the team dynamic itself. And I'll explain a little bit more as we get into it. So this diverse perspective, you're going to have people that you're going to be teamed with, you're going to work with your cohort in January 2024. It's going to be probably about 110 people um, right across Canada. And that geographical perspective gives the diversity, adds to the diversity and uh, to the robustness of this program. So not just job diversity, where you've got many different sectors, you've got many different job titles, roles, functions, but you've also got the geography where you can look at things that are going on uniquely uh, in Ottawa, as an example, or on the coasts, um, or in some northern communities. Um, and of course, what's going on downtown Toronto, or what's going on in Edmonton and uh, in Calgary. So right across the board, and virtually, we've got some really interesting diversity, for sure. This is what the class in now looks like. 40 different BCOMs, it could be BBA, BCOM, um, different degrees where they do have the prerequisites. Most of them are, are Canadian schools, and I would say pretty much all of the you know, schools are represented uh, with respect to uh, the different universities. We do get batches and groups from some universities, uh, but we've also got undergraduates that have taken their uh, degree in the US or internationally as well. And we've got 103 students in this year, 15 teams. 14 countries are represented. And what I mean by that is the, the, the nationality background. Um, so it's a, a very diverse group that's in here culturally as well. And from an industry perspective, you can read some of these industries, financial services, CPG, consulting, bioscience, ocean tech, agri-tech, proteins, digital media and entertainment, uh, autonomous vehicles. So a fascinating group in for-profit, not-for-profit, some government. Um, so wide diversity with respect to the industries. And that gives you the opportunity to uh, talk, network, and, and really build relationships. And if you're interested in some industries, it's a, a firsthand opportunity to speak to people that are in that space. On average, we've got a little over seven years work experience uh, with the group that's in now, and that's typical. Now, again, you need a minimum of two. Uh, we have some 10, 15, 20 years. So lots of diversity with respect to the span of experience as well. And of course, that also varies in terms of managerial experience. Some have more, some have less. And then the virtual teams I mentioned that we added was an opportunity to pull in some fascinating things uh, and people that are doing great things right across the country, um, including many that we've had from indigenous communities where there's some fascinating development that's going on. So lots of diversity. This is a snapshot. Our gender balance we're quite proud of, very proud of in terms of who we've got in the program and one of the more unique MBAs that are out there. We do have a strong focus on diversity, uh, inclusivity, uh, indigeneity, uh, and of course, uh, looking at this gender balance as well, uh, with respect to focusing on advancing women in business, Forte Foundation that we're proud to be a part of, Women of Influence, and we've also got scholarships for Indigenous students and Black students, and Dean's Entrance Scholarships for high performers as well. So let's talk a little bit about support. And again, thinking all the while, the backdrop to this is you're looking at your MBA, you're looking at different MBA schools, and you should. Um, and even as we talk in interview, you know, I often point people in a MBA program that may be more suited to them. I'm happy to do that. I'm very proud of the people that we have in the program because we want strong, passionate, engaged alumni as well. So the unique element, one of the unique elements, in addition to that pan-Canadian experience, is the coaching, the support piece to this. Four types, four, 
facets of coaching. You've got team coaching where you will be part of a team. We form the teams right from the get-go. So you will geographically be located uh, in your market. If you're in one of the boardroom markets, it could be on the Edmonton team, Vancouver team, Toronto team, et cetera. Um, or virtually, we've got teams right across an east, a central, and a west virtual team or teams. You will work with your team coach. And this is a professional team coach who works with the team to set the rules of engagement, the who does what, the how you set the agreement on how you're going to work together. You're going to do peer reviews on each other, 360 reviews. You're going to learn and understand how to become a stronger, better team leader. Sometimes you'll lead projects and, and cases and, and uh, assignments. Sometimes you'll follow. And following can, can often be a new muscle for some people, but it's working out. And again, that's working with the team and the coach on that. The executive coach, another coach yet again. The executive coach is somebody that we line you up with. You have one-on-one -on -one hours with them. And they may have 20, 25 years of experience in different industries. And you can bounce ideas and thoughts and development and comments and questions off of them. And they are there to give you advice. Often, you don't get that till later in your career. But you've got set hours with this individual. Lifestyle coaching, another one of our facets of the uh, Smith Edge. Lifestyle coaching, the Fit to Lead program, looks at three different areas, fitness, nutrition, and mental health, and helps develop uh, well-balanced and well-rounded leaders. And then the fourth type of coaching, the fourth facet is career coaching. And this is typically with the group that we have in that's working. You must be working, you must have an undergraduate in business, so where you're working um, is obviously where you're focused on at this point. Most of the people that the career coach will work with, and you've got one-on-one -on -one hours as well as group events, et cetera, but you're really working with them to understand how do I use my MBA where I am? How do I be seen as a, a hypo, a high potential? And how do I use it to get advancement, to get exposure to different areas, promotions, et cetera? Some now or eventually are ready to pivot. And the questions become, how do I get to fill in the blank, this industry? We've got sessions and seminars set up for those people interested in that or understanding working one-on-one -on -one with your coach. How do I get into consulting, CPG, banking, et cetera? Um, and again, these are some of the things that the class last year uh, worked with the career coach on. We had career coaching appointments, of course, one-on-ones that I mentioned. Uh, but also working them with them on resume and, and interviewing and corporate information sessions, roundtables, there's mini internships. And in some cases, many cases, people are interested through the year, through their 12-month MBA. They're already becoming more and more attractive to, uh, to prospective employers with their you know, understanding that they've got work experience. They're going to, uh, they're on the precipice of achieving their MBA from Queens. So many recruit and we've had a number that have been recruited um, and they've changed careers they've changed jobs um, you know while they're doing their mba so lots of opportunity right across the board and this is just a few of many many companies and brands that our mbas uh, work for and work with and uh, you know the purpose of this is to help you understand it's a, a wide and diverse group that's out there companies that you may be interested in companies you're in so working and understanding colleagues that work in that industry is very important. The other area that's very unique, I mentioned the team coach, is the team approach. You're going to work as a team. Half your grade is teams, half is individual. Not just group work, which many business schools working on cases do. We work on cases here. We work on assignments and team papers and, and uh, those sort of things. But you are working in uh, the instance or the focus of teams working with your team coach. Half your grade is individual as well, but this is a very important piece. Some years ago, we looked at a study by McKinsey Consulting called Decoding Leadership. And it looked at those 20 plus characteristics of great leaders. Many of those are what some call soft skills, but we look at them as power skills. And that includes how do you form a team? How do you engage a team? How do you focus a team? How do you get the best out of a team? How do you work as a team? And then, of course, how do you write a plan and work the plan and motivate people to do that? So a lot of focus. You're going to work on teams. It's not all just agile scrums. 
it's working with people in small groups, larger groups, but typically you're looking at a team format. And that's something that's very unique and very focused uh, on here at, uh, at Queen's Business School. So looking at reputation, I talked about that as you shop around and you should, when you look at your MBA, uh, we don't chase uh, reputation scores or rankings, but we certainly find ourselves at the top or near top of many publications across Canada, US and internationally as well. Two things we do chase and we invest into heavily, uh, the AACSB and the EFMD Equus. These are two organizations that you must earn membership in and you earn membership in them on an annual basis by providing results. So how are our professors ranked and rated? Uh, are they doing research? Uh, are we following and achieving the learning outcomes that we set? What's the feedback of students in terms of the program that they've been in? A number of different measures that go into uh, earning your membership in these two organizations. We've been longstanding members of these organizations, um, both globally and internationally. And again, we're quite proud of that when it comes to the reputation of Queens and the Smith School of Business. So this extends into alumni. This is another thing you're buying. This is a big part of your ROI. I talk a lot about this at the interview stage, but you really are investing into a community and we feed that community. Smith Connect, which is, think of it as our LinkedIn for all of our 26,000 uh, Smith School, Queens Business School alumni. They're around the world. You're probably working with somebody from Smith now. Um, or you will work with them, or you'll hire them, or you'll be hired by them. So that's a very important piece to us. And we really feed that, uh, that, that networking and that connectivity. When you're here physically, you're going to be here three times a year on campus, two weeks in January, a week in June, and a week in December. And throughout the year, we've got alumni affairs and uh, career coaching. It helps to feed that networking. And then in perpetuity afterwards, you're going to be part of that group as well. Again, throw in any questions you've got to the Q&A, happy to answer them as we're going through this. So let's talk a little bit about nuts and bolts here when it comes to requirements. So we are looking for an undergraduate uh, degree in business. You do not require a GMAT. The reason that we don't require a GMAT is you've achieved uh, a high point, a high grade point average, minimum grade point of B is encouraged, not always necessary. In some applicant cases where they've got extensive work experience, they may have taken additional credentials like CPA, CA, uh, securities course, um, you know, professional management and, uh, and, and project management, uh, etc. Uh, they may be black belts in Lean Six Sigma, all different kinds of other credentials that people have in addition to their undergraduate in business. But we look at these 10 courses. These 10 courses, they, they form the base from which we can then kind of take the next gear level or gear shift and look at that last year of your MBA, which is the 12 months that we've got here at Queens during the year. And again, work experience is also extremely important because we really play on that, use that, leverage that when it comes to debates, discussions, really robust discussions that you'll have with your professor, with your teams and with the, the wider team across Canada. So that's the minimum requirement that we look at. You'll have an interview with me. We, of course, require a couple of references, um, et cetera. But again, that's a very important piece to make sure there's team fit. And that's something, as I say, that we want to make sure as we put the teams uh, put the teams together. So these are the costs. This is the cost of the program. That's all inclusive. That includes tuition, uh, books, studies, uh, learning materials, a team wear, accommodations. You're going to be here. Uh, tw uh, three times a year. I'll talk about that in a minute, but that includes top level food and uh, private hotel room. It also includes team coaching, executive coaching, career coaching, and the fit to lead and resilience workshops that we've got, the high performance team workshops that we've got. So this also includes an MBA prep. So let me take a minute and explain that. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I revamped the program, working with faculty, working with other program leaders, and directors and working with alumni. I heard from alumni what they really wanted. And in fact, as they look back, they needed was a preparation opportunity. Because in some cases, it's been seven, 10, 15 years since they've been in the undergraduate world or at school. So we put together 
a MBA boot camp or a prep course program. So as early as October, even before you start, we'll start to do coffee chats. We'll connect everybody on Slack. You can start to network with the teams across Canada. I've already signed up about 40 people and enrolled them as I build out the classrooms across Canada. Um, and again, we've got a rolling admission. And when we bring people on board, we start to immerse them in the community and, uh, and, and kind of the dynamics of Queens in the business school here at Smith. So as early as October, I worked with two professors, Dr. Henry Schneider, he's the economics professor, and Dr. Schneider put together 10 videos. And these remind and refresh you, they don't repeat, remind and refresh you on core concepts, principles, and theories of micro and macroeconomics. You get access to these videos, self-driven, easily digestible, stop, start, rewatch, but it's preparing you to hit the ground running in January. I worked with Erin Webster, she's the accounting professor, and Professor Webster put together six videos that really look at uh, a public company, uh, balance sheets, financial statements, pro formas, um, reminding and refreshing you about the accounting world and the basics. Uh, then we worked with a company, we work with a company called the Marquee Group, and you will uh, take part in a financial modeling course, all included in the cost. But the financial modeling course happens in mid-November, a Saturday, Sunday, all day of each of those two days. We give you lots of warning once you're enrolled and, uh, and, and in the program. And you can stream in this financial modeling course into beginner, intermediate, or advanced, depending on your background, skill set, where you work, what you do, etc. Then we gather everybody together, tail end of November, a Saturday, virtually, gather everybody together. You're going to meet your faculty, you're going to meet your coaches, you're going to meet some key people that are part of the program, the program uh, manager uh, that I work with uh, that really is, is day to day as am I on the program. I'm going to do a presentation skills workshop. Um, you're going to meet your teams um, across Canada, the other individuals in the program, and you're going to understand what do I need to start and do to be prepared for January. In January, that's when you hit the ground running, and I'll talk about that. So I mentioned teams in this pan-Canadian experience right across Canada. Sure, we've got hard boardrooms in Vancouver, in Edmonton, Calgary, in downtown Toronto, Markham, Mississauga, Ottawa, Montreal. But the virtual teams, and this is you know representative of where we have students right across uh, this wonderful country in all different parts. Um, and again, virtually, people are able to gather in you know, from Yellowknife and Nunavut and just right across um, uh, some very interesting geographies working in very interesting businesses. And all of these, about 110 of you starting in January will gather together. You will come here in January for two weeks. We'll uh, be here and then we're going to take you from the Queen's Business School or Queen's Campus, Queen's University. And this is on the campus, the Queen's Business School. Smith School of Business. And it's here that you're really going to uh, get immersed in high performance teams. You're going to complete two courses in January, real kickstart to the year. You're going to start two others. You're going to do high performance teams, as I mentioned. We're going to bookend that with resilience training, uh, lots of social activities, lots of networking. We're going to cross pollinate you with other programs as well. Top level food, top level hotel, really the, an executive experience. Um, and then you're back in your boardroom, uh, in your market, wherever you might live and work. And most of the program after the two weeks in January uh, is delivered like that. So this is what our studio looks like. We've got a state-of-the-art, two studios, in fact, eight cameras in each studio, smart boards, digital hand raising. This is the perspective of the technician in one of the two studios. He can see all of the classrooms. He sees the professor in there. And if I flop that around, this is the pers professor's perspective as she's looking at you. You can see each other in your classroom. So you're physically in your boardroom in those markets I mentioned. You're virtually in your, uh, your boardroom for the virtual teams. You can see each other. They can see you. In this case, the professor is asking a question. Uh, Jackie Hilton up pops her, her profile. She's from the Calgary Airport Authority. She's the manager of cost, sustainability, and innovation. Professor sees that. You can all hear Jackie, and she's presenting her perspective on a case. 
and the professor weighs in, you can weigh in, etc. So it's a very dynamic and interactive environment, top level tech that we've employed for this. And this is these live lectures are how in between the sessions where you're physically here in Kingston, two weeks in January, a week in June, a week in December, how in between most of the program, the MBA is delivered. So as you're thinking about your MBA and you're thinking about the different aspects and, and uh, elements of it, um, and I encourage you to shop around, um, I'm gonna ask for any questions uh, just shortly, but I want you to think about these elements, flexibility in terms of how you do it, the format, the structure of it, the perspective. Uh, and again, uh, many of you uh, may look at other MBAs. Those MBAs are city specific or, or they're you know, greater Toronto area in the case of many of the business schools. But the opportunity to have a pan-Canadian experience is something that we've intentionally put into place. The support piece, no other MBA has coaching, team coaching, executive coaching, career coaching, and lifestyle coaching. It's something that we've heard time and time again played back as a massive part of uh, the experience and a huge part of the uh, return on investment for students. The team approach, many MBAs work in groups. They'll work on, on cases in groups. Uh, this is a real team approach where you will be on the same team for the full year. And we put a lot of development and activity into that, even psychological testing in advance to put the right people together. And where we can, we ensure that we've got diversity within the team. It's not all bankers from RBC on a team or wherever they might be. Um, and that's very important as well. And the team approach with the team coach uh, is something that uh, is uh, certainly a differentiator. And then the reputation uh, and connection, both for alumni, current students, but also the value and reputation of the school as you go out and talk about where you got your MBA. So think about these things uh, as you're looking at and, and filtering you know, where you might go for an MBA, what you might do. It's a big step, it's an important step, it's not insignificant in terms of the cost of it, and it's something you want to ensure that you get a, a pretty significant ROI out of. So next steps, uh, and again, I'm gonna entertain questions shortly, um, it really is working with an application advisor. And we've got humans, we've got Carrier, we've got Nicole, who can easily look at your profile even before you submit official transcripts and help you understand, do I meet the requirements that are necessary? In some cases, students don't meet those requirements and they are directed to how to catch up or make up for whether they may have a soft grade in a particular course or courses or there may be some other elements of their application that are, are softer or missing. And Carrie or Nicole can help you with that for sure. And again, they're, they're humans, they're kind. Um, there's no charge to apply and start to look at this uh, for sure. So um, we're about 1230. I'm going to ask, and again, this is the class. So this is this year's class that I've got in. Wonderful group of people right across the country. Um, wonderfully and beautifully, they look like Canada. Um, amazing backgrounds, uh, diverse on a whole bunch of levels, and a great group that's in now, and, uh, and now they're better than a quarter deep through their year. So I'm going to look at questions. I think we've got at least one, and again, throw them in if I can help, um, or feel free to ask Carrie or Nicole as you're looking at and talking about the program. What about a BA in public policy governance administration that is coupled with a master in public policy? administration law. I like that, um, anonymous, whoever you may be. Um, that's interesting. Um, so again, we'll look at those 10 required courses. Um, there may be some, and I often look through course descriptions and overviews and syllabuses um, and rubrics, in fact, um, and really look at the equivalency. Is that a strat course? Is that an organizational behavior course? Could that be a, uh, you know, a, a, an economics course? So I would encourage you to talk to Nicole and, uh, and to uh, Carrie. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, hi Glenn, thank you for the information. Very helpful, you're welcome. Two questions, any advice on how it can be, a, uh, on how I can be a stronger application? I understand admission is done on a rolling basis. Is there a timeline you can share, deadline, et cetera? So first, first point. How can I be a stronger application? Look at your, your CV, your resume, um, you know, polish it up, look at it, tease out your experience, what you do as you should uh, in any resume, any CV that you've got. 
Uh, what did you achieve, you know, where you are and where you were before that? Um, and then also, I'm always interested in um, community work, volunteer work. It shows a well-rounded individual. You know, when you think of your LinkedIn, look at those things that you may have accomplished, um, you know, badges you've earned. Um, make sure those are, are played out in your, in your resume as well. Um, and then really, we'll chat. and We can talk about team fit. And that's something that I'm very focused on. Uh, the resume is important. Work experience is important. Your, your grade point average and academics are important. But a huge part of this is, is, is this the right program for you? And are you right for, you know, the, the Queen's MBA as an alumni that'll go forward and we're, we can all be proud of? Um, I understand admission, rolling in admission. Um, there is no deadline, although I shouldn't say that. We typically, we will be fully uh, subscribed by, I would guess, you know, fully subscribed by October of this year. Um, typically, well, we've got almost 40 now. By the end of the summer, by September, when we come back from Labor Day, I would guess that we'll be about 70 uh, people in the class plan for 110. And, um, and again, we're starting to build out. I'm already, I've already placed people in boardrooms or virtual boardrooms across Canada. So that's something that's, uh, you know, we're starting to do. So it's a rolling deadline is the way I'd describe it. And although we've had students that enter as late as December, you know, where we may have space, we also um, drew from a waiting uh, a list that we had and some that had deferred for January 2024 start. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, Christian, uh, would the program uh, use a case study approach? Oh, yes, we do. Uh, very much we focus on cases. That's a huge part of what we do. Um, and again, they're cases that are obviously relevant and topical. And depending on the discipline uh, of the courses that you'll take, um, that's something that you are absolutely going to be using and a part of. And it could be a team approach to it where half your grade is teams and half is individual. You also do uh, a capstone, a thesis course. So your team is going to focus on a real company with a real problem or opportunity. And that may be something uh, like a, a new product launch, a new market entry, a competitive threat, uh, an M&A, a reorg, something where you can apply the 18 courses that you'll take through the year. And then in December, when you're here for your final uh, live session, you will report out just as if you were a Bain, a McKinsey, a Deloitte, a, a Boston Consulting Group, your findings and recommendations um, for approaching this problem or opportunity, a scan. Uh, I know I'm probably early, you're never early. I'm planning to do my AMBA in 2025. I just graduated with York BCom in finance how would the networking opportunities go for that? Um, not sure. I mean, I'll talk generally about networking opportunities um, and finance. We've got a lot of finance people that are in the program. All the big five banks and many of the fintechs are represented. Uh, we also, uh, Muscan, we try to cross-pollinate with our other master programs, so our MFIN, our Master of Management and Analytics. Uh, data and analytics, our masters of, of management and artificial intelligence, our masters in innovation and entrepreneurship. So there's lots of finance people, and there's many, many that are in finance of the 26,000 uh, business school grads that we've got from Queens. Um, let's scan another question. How much should the grades ideally be those 10 courses from undergrad, at least a B? So we're looking at those 10 courses because those are the basis of which you can then go to the next level. So you're going to do OB, you're going to do stats, you're going to do finance, you're going to do marketing, you're going to do accounting, you're going to do economics. It's always the next level of that. So having a strong underpinning in that course is very important. Some I've seen have been softer. And in some cases, when I look at other grades, they're much stronger. On balance, are you ready for the MBA? And of course, team fits another huge part of that. In some cases, we say, you know what, this one's a little soft. I recommend that you take an online course to build that grade back up. It's your one course. Um, you can take something online through Athabasca or Thompson Rivers University level, where you can actually make up, if you will, for that, uh, that soft score. So lots of different things that can kind of we can do or talk about. Um, but we do look for a uh, strong academic background in a business program with those 10 prerequisites, uh, because you're, you're going to be touching all of them, but it's the next level of that. So having that strength, or at least that understanding, is critical as well. So I think oh, we've answered all the questions. There'll be other questions. 
talk to Nicole or to uh, to Carrie, simply Google Smith AMBA, um, and you can get the the link to the the site. More information on there. I look forward to speaking with you. I really appreciate your time. And Elizabeth, thank you in the background. Thank you to everybody. This is going to be sent to you. It's recorded. And uh, you can certainly have an opportunity to review it. But I look forward to speaking to you, uh, speaking with you, so that we can talk more about the program and your background. And I can tell you about, you know, these, this group, as you see, uh, you know, on the screen that are in it, and how they're feeling about the program, and uh, what they're getting out of it. So have a great day. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. All the best to everybody.